What if I told you that as a younger man, I used to struggle with what they call LSE, not London School of Economics, but low self-esteem. Now you're going to be like, how is that even possible? I tell you no lie. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you five things that helped me and five things that can help you to deal with low self-esteem, build your confidence and leave out your true potential. Stay tuned for more. How about a gift isn't enough? I'm sure you've seen carpenters who promise to deliver your furniture in a few days only to disappear for weeks or very good dealers who just never meet the deadline that's really frustrating right while they may be good at what they do they often struggle financially there are many gifted people who never made it big like nikola tesla who died poor despite his incredible contributions to science and engineering now you may be wondering why exactly did this happen it's simply because having a gift isn't enough to live the life you dream of you need to turn that gift into a profitable venture and that's where the rich genius comes in. As someone who has found my gifts and turned them into successful businesses, I can show you how to do the same. The rich genius is the key to unlocking your potential, growing your influence and making money from your gifts. So if you're ready to find your purpose, make money and live the life you've always dreamed of, click the learn more button now. The rich genius is waiting to transform your life. All right, so you're wondering, why did I struggle with low self-esteem? Two major things. Number one, I was simple and short. I was down to earth. I was like a remarkable essay. I was straight to the point. I had a close relationship with gravity, AKA, you know what that is. And you know when you're a teenager and you're not as tall as your other friends, people go like, short man devil. When will you pay your development levy? How far? What's going on? There was another reason, but I'll tell you that in another video. So, how did I get through that? The very first thing is for you to realize that you're not here based on the endorsement, validation, or approval of anybody. You are here because God considers you important enough to be a part of his grand plan. The first way to deal with low self-esteem is to think about it like this. The king of the universe approved my presence here. I'm not an apology to my generation. I'm not an inconvenience to my family. I'm not a burden to my friends. I'm an, an asset delegated by God for eternity. And I'm walking through this phase of my journey as one who has been authorized and validated to be here. So regardless of who doesn't like you or what they don't think you're able to do, always understand this you are not an apology you are an asset number two is that most people care more about what you have and what you can do than they even remember to think about what you don't have and what you can do i usually put it like this do you care that oprah winfrey doesn't know how to dance away or how to make offensala or how to pound yam you don't care right do you care that steve jobs never knew how to dance Etigi or Makosa or whatever. If you don't care, right? Do you care that Bill Gates doesn't know anything about shopping and no joy like that? You don't care. What do you care about? You care about their ability, their inventions, their products, their assets, the messages that they push. So focus more on what you have, who you are, what you can do, and the value you can create. Number three is that you must consistently invest in yourself. I stumbled on the book by Tony Robbins in my uncle's house when I was 17. That book was called Awaken the Giants Within You, one of the most transformational books I've read in my life. And one of the things it said in that book is that the Japanese were able to advance their cause and bounce back from the disastrous event of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, the bomb blast, because they created something called the Kaizen Principle. And he modified and called it the Kanai Principle. Well, the Kaizen principle was, what if we can improve on everything we do every day of our lives? How much further are we going to get? And so by doing that for a couple of years, over a period of decades, the Japanese were able to rebuild their economy and to build a strong community, a strong nation. So Thor Robbins teaches what he calls the Kanai principle, the C-A-N-I principle, which is constant and never-ending improvement. Once I stumbled upon that, I became obsessive with learning and growth and has changed my life. What that does for you is that it places the attention on the wisdom you have and not the gaps in your life. So I discover people will come to me and ask me, how do you solve, out, solve problems in your relationship, in your finances, in your goal setting and stuff like that. So embrace constant and never ending improvement. Number four, you want to take on challenges and confront adversity and face 
your fears. One of the things I've noticed about people that suffer from shyness, when I say suffer, yes, it's actually suffering because you're missing out on so many things. Suffering from shyness, low self-esteem, a sense of inadequacy, is that they shy away from anything confrontational, combative, anything that has to do with conflict or requires courage. They shrink away from adversity. And the more you shrink, the smaller you become. But when you get to a point where you say, well, I don't really like speaking in public, but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't really like talking to strangers, but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't like investing my money, but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't know how to dance, but I'm just going to try my best in public. People may laugh at you, ridicule you, but what happens is you grow bigger than the fears you confront. Sometimes the win is not the absence of the fear. It's your confrontation of it. The fact that you stood up to fight. The fact that you stood up to take responsibility. So face your fears, take on challenges, push yourself out there. I was not always comfortable standing on stage or communicating with masses of people, but the more I did it, the more confident I became. And today, I can stand in front of thousands. I've literally stood in front of tens of thousands before and I delivered very well. Number five is that you want to build your spiritual, intellectual, and emotional capacities. Now, this physical frame that you see is only a part of your life. This is the physical interface, what makes you visible in this realm. But there are parts of you that make you you. So your spirit, your mind, your emotions, those things are possibly more important than your physical pulchritude or physical packaging. So invest more in those things. Now, many of the world's greatest people, performers, athletes, innovators, inventors, communicators, leaders, before they get on stage or get in boardrooms to do things, guess what they do? They charge themselves up spiritually or emotionally with affirmations, with declarations, with some of them incantations, with proclamations, what they will call psyching themselves up or self-talk. You see it with athletes when they're around the starting block just jumping and speaking to themselves or chewing gum or blowing puffs of air. Basically what they're doing is they're galvanizing the spiritual, emotional, and intellectual resources. So spend time praying, studying the word, meditating, declarations, affirmations. Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself and say, Dami, you are a gift to your generation. You are a carrier of divine life and light. You have the ability to do exploits. You can go anywhere God sends you. You can do whatever God comes to your hands. And as you do this, your life will be forever changed. I've got a bonus for you, but before we do that, take a look at this announcement. Are you tired of putting your passion on hold because you don't think it will make you rich? It's time for you to change the mindset as that and even the life you've always dreamed of. Hi, I'm Damien Alon Wati when I'm here to help you unleash your full potential with the Rich Genius Program. As someone who has found his gifts and turned them into profitable ventures, I know firsthand the power or following your passion. The Rich Genius Program is designed to help you discover your gifts, find your purpose, and make a lot of money from them. With our guidance, you will learn how to turn your passion into a thriving business that will provide you with financial freedom. So why wait? Don't put your passion on hold any longer. Start your journey towards success with the Rich Genius Program today. Join me and become a part of a community of progressive people who are deploying their gifts profitably. Click the Learn More button now to get started on your path to success. All right, welcome back. So ensure you take advantage of the opportunities and the offers that we have. I'm shooting live from Dream Space, which is the space for your dreams where we have a variety of resources, books, t-shirts, merch, consulting opportunities, coaching offers, a podcast, and so much more. And I look forward to you joining us on one of our events real soon. Now, the bonus is this. You've got to borrow belief. Now, there's a concept in coaching called borrowed belief. Now, what does that mean? That means that sometimes you're so unbelieving, you are so disenfranchised, you are so like, I don't think I can do it, I don't think I can be there. But there's something called borrowed belief, which means that if the people around you, people that are considered important or precious or knowledgeable, they say, do you know you can do this? 
In other words, they make suggestions or they make proposals to you. Now, don't say, mm, I can never do it. No, no, no. If a leader, a pastor, a minister, a coach, a therapist, a mentor, a caregiver, a mental health advocate, a bosom friend, a covenant partner says to you, do this. I think you can do this. Even if you don't believe you can do it, borrow belief from them. The fact that they see you in that light possibly means that they are seeing a you in you that you're yet to see. And the more you press into that borrowed belief, the more it becomes a seed that you're incubating in your heart and in your mind. And eventually, you will be able to deliver impressive results just like the thought you could and your confidence will compound. I believe that this has really helped you. These are the things that helped me and I believe that as you engage them, they'll help you to now talk to me. Don't leave me without a comment. Talk to me in the comment section. Let me know which of these five things, five plus one <laughs> things, you're going to begin to practice from today. Now, don't forget, like this video, subscribe to this channel, share this video with somebody in your community, somebody that needs it, and I will see you in the next video. I'm Dami Uluwatimu, the pastor of Kings. Until the next video, keep on thriving in the things of God.